if you have a multi core machine how exactly things are handled what are threads how threads are different from processes right and how exactly node js internally handles things is it single threaded is it multi threaded and what not we have already started talking about basics of backend architecture how a client server actually interacts what happens when you do www.google.com how exactly this complete communication works right and what are the things in the architectural design of the final coding implementation that is very relevantly used in industries like something like the controller layer the handlers the service layer the repository layer we talked about the repository pattern config layer validation layer and what not and after all of this discussion we started our discussion on express js which is one of the most famous frameworks in the node js ecosystem so most of the students actually went through that where we talked about some really interesting and deep concepts of basics of javascript around closures scopes iterators generators promises callbacks async await and what not so recently on this channel you might have already seen a video where i actually launched a brand new course which was the lambda 4.0 the advanced backend development with node js cohort right we started this cohort a few months back and i felt like i should make a video telling you all of you about what has all happened what are the topics that we have already covered in the cohort what are some interesting things that we have been discussing and so on so this is just like a cohort update a video that what all has been actually done and uh, what's the trajectory up from here so that's going to be the whole thing about this particular video so without any further ado let's just start but before starting the video if you have not yet subscribed to the channel do consider subscribing it we are going to put some really awesome content coming up ahead regarding your tech and career so let's just start before moving forward i would like to tell you about our brand new offering at algo camp around the advanced spring boot backend development cohort so we were getting a lot of requests to actually launch our next iteration of the spring boot cohort and here we are this one is far more bigger and better than the last one and trust me if you are somebody who is looking to start their journey in the world of spring boot in the backend ecosystem or maybe you already know some things about backend development maybe in spring boot or maybe in some other tech stack this is going to be a one stop solution for you we are going to talk about everything from the absolute beginner level to the advanced level in spring boot we are going to talk about how exactly you can set up your backend ecosystem and backend projects in spring boot we are going to take a microservice driven architecture and build different different project including an uber app including airbnb app payment wallet like paytm wallet app and many more we are going to talk about how exactly microservices can actually communicate with each other in synchronous and asynchronous fashion we are going to see a lot of interesting microservices pattern like cqrs pattern saga pattern for distributed transaction how you can implement saga pattern through orchestration and choreography how saga pattern is going to help you with respect to the implementation if you compare that with two phase commit how you can implement each one of them what is the outbox pattern how exactly event sourcing is going to work how you can integrate kafka for your event sourcing and what not we are going to see so many interesting database concepts like how exactly no sql are internally implemented using lsm tree what are write ahead logs how you can replicate your databases how you can shard your databases how you can design a good database schema and what not all the topics that we are going to cover must be listed in front of you on the screen here what i can say is that this course is going to be one stop solution to become an advanced backend engineer in spring boot this is definitely going to demand some good time commitment from all the students who are interested but trust me this is going to be one hell of a ride so what are you waiting for do check out the link in the description section below and read the complete end to end syllabus of what we are going to cover in the spring boot cohort you can actually use the coupon spring 2025 to get maximum possible discount on the course and i am really excited to see you guys in the cohort right do check out the link description section below and let's get back to the video so we started the cohort around of course introduction to node js now this introduction to node js was not something like very surface level we actually went very deep into the concepts of node js first of all understanding what node js is what is a runtime how exactly node js does a lot of things then we started slowly and steadily figuring out a lot of internals around node js that what is the v8 engine what v8 engine does what are the different different components of the v8 engine and why do you need them right components like um, a uh, crankshaft right components like the ignition uh, a lot of things are there that are actually technically discussed post that we talked about libuv why this libuv library is technically used what are some of the very key features that the libuv library provides node js and what not 
then we also started talking about how exactly the process management actually works in computers how exactly process works in one single core if you have a single core machine how things are actually handled if you have a multi core machine how exactly things are handled what are threads how threads are different from processes right and how exactly node js internally handles things is it single threaded is it multi threaded and what not all of these different different concepts around node js we talked about and we also saw some interesting node js concepts like the uh, node js globals right the module pattern of node js where we talked about the common js moduling the es6 moduling after that we saw some really interesting modules of node js including of course the fs module http module and what not this actually laid down an interesting and firm foundations around node js of course all those people who were not very much comfortable with javascript all the prerequisite lectures of javascript was already provided so most of the students actually went through that where we talked about some really interesting and deep concepts of basics of javascript around closures scopes iterators generators promises callbacks async await and what not right so this was kind of like the phase 1 of the cohort that's when we actually started phase 2 in the phase 2 we have already started talking about basics of backend architecture how a client server actually interacts what happens when you do www.google.com how exactly this complete communication works right what are some interesting networking concepts like what is a dns what are protocols how two machines actually communicate with each other and what not we took some really interesting case studies to try to see that if let's say we have to make some really scalable applications what are some of the steps that we can actually take concepts like horizontal vertical scaling right concepts around communication between two machines and what not post that we also talked about how let's say if we know how this complete interaction between machines are going to work how we are going to actually write the code we started talking about the mvc architecture then we saw what are the drawbacks of mvc and after that we actually started actually discussing what are the things in the architectural design of the final coding implementation that is very relevantly used in industries like something like the controller layer the handlers the service layer the repository layer we talked about the repository pattern config layer validation layer and what not and after all of this discussion we started our discussion on express js which is one of the most famous frameworks in the node js ecosystem we saw that how using express js we can actually set up a project and we also learned about the concepts of apis what apis are we talked about http rest apis we saw all the rest conventions why rest is required and what not and then we saw how we can write apis in express js we saw that how you can set up your own config layer controller layer service layer repository layer validation layer and what not in express we also saw some really interesting libraries like zod for validation we also made sure that all of the coding efforts that we are actually doing is with typescript and hence we also discussed some basics of typescript and while developing a lot of things around in express we learned more concepts around typescript we also were able to set up production grade logging mechanisms where if you want you can have a dedicated log file which is going to get dumped for you how you can int uh, integrate interesting libraries like winston to make sure that your logs are very much explanatory altogether how you can have a uh, postman setup for uh, making sure that you are able to test your rest apis very interesting concepts around query params uh, i would say request body url params lot of interesting details around express js middlewares the concept of middlewares how you can set up your routing layer how you can set up a routing layer in a way that you are able to write some very scalable versioned apis these were some really interesting concepts which were ensuring that we have a good solid foundations on basics of back end development architectures and we have some good basic foundation on express js as well which is going to be kind of like a primary framework for developing a lot of software In the phase three, we then also started discussing a lot of things around databases. A lot of prerequisite lectures around what database is, how you can write some basic queries in databases like MySQL and MongoDB. Interesting MySQL and MongoDB concepts like joins in MySQL, writing different different type of queries in MySQL and what not. These were the basics. At that point of time, we actually started taking uh, things to the next level. We started discussing about that. Let's say if there is a NoSQL, how exactly internals of NoSQLs work. 
we saw some really interesting concepts around LSM trees. How exactly LSM trees empowers a lot of NoSQLs. Then we started also talking about a very, very important property that exists in a lot of RDBMS and a few NoSQLs as well, that is transactions. What transactions are, how exactly transactions are capable of doing a few things, what is ACID compliance for those transactions. We took some really deep dive around atomicity, consistency, isolation, durability, specifically in isolation. We talked about that, what will be the problems that can occur if two transactions or two more than two transactions are running properly. We talked about the problems like dirty read problem, non-repeatable read problem, phantom read problem and whatnot. And then we saw that how some databases like MySQL give you solutions using which you can actually solve these problems. Solutions like isolation levels, right? For example, serializable isolation level, read committed isolation levels and whatnot. We also saw some concepts around locks. We saw the concept of pessimistic lock, optimistic lock, how you can set up a distributed cache based lock. All of these things we talked about. And that's made sure that we have a lot of database concepts under the bed. Now, it's not like we have completed the databases concept. We are going to also see some more advanced database concepts that, okay, how you can partition your database, what is partitioning, what is sharding, how replication is going to work and whatnot. But this was definitely a good introduction to the databases that we actually got. So we have formally started working on the first project that is the Airbnb microservices based project. We talked about what are monolith, what are microservices. We are going to ensure that we have a very scalable architecture set up for the Airbnb project. We saw what are some really key challenging things that exist in booking systems like Airbnb. We saw that there can be problems of double booking, right, that one user might book the same hotel twice, right? There can be problem of race condition that two or more than two people are actually trying to book the same hotel. We saw how the DB design of something like Airbnb can be done. How exactly you can have something like booking.com and Airbnb which have so many hotels, so many rooms. How exactly the DB designing is going to work? Because there are so many nuances in this DB design. For example, one person can actually book a hotel room not just for one day, but let's say six days from here. Or maybe a hotel room is actually booked from 1st to 10th and then 13th to 17th but it's available on 11 to 12th. So how this kind of like range based booking can actually be facilitated, how we can actually ensure that we have minimum uh, duplication in the complete database, how the database can be made scalable and all of this design, how it can be done with RDBMS. All of those concepts we had talked about in detail and we also saw DB design of other applications as well that how exactly similar kind of an, uh, DB design you can replicate to other booking application, how you can have a DB design for a social media applications and whatnot. So this actually gave us a good idea on how to actually proceed with the upcoming services. We also saw that how you can actually write item potent APIs. We are actually as of now looking at how we can implement all the concurrency related solutions that can actually be implemented for solving the concurrency problems. So the complete project is going to be the baseline because all of the existing concepts as well or whatever concepts I talked about earlier, we are ensuring that all of those concepts are also taught as a in a hands-on manner and we are keeping this particular Airbnb project as the baseline for that. For example, we wanted to talk about what are DB migrations. Why do you need DB migration and what is this migration layer all about? So we implemented the DB migration with the SQLize ORM as well as Prisma ORM as well. So there are two microservices as of now we have developed. So one of the microservices we are integrating SQLize ORM, one of the microservices we are integrating Prisma ORM so that students can also get a variety of libraries to actually explore and concepts like DB migration can also be explored very easily. So we are ensuring that we have a project in hand and we develop that project in order to learn any particular concept. If you want to know what all things in detail we have actually covered, you can go to the course website, all of the lectures that are actually coming up with the green tick, all of those are technically completed. And if you want to see what else is going to be covered, you can check the syllabus of the particular course on the same link in the description section below. Um, if you are somebody who was actually planning to learn backend development and maybe let's say know some basics of it, this might be a good time to actually look for the Lambda backend development cohort. We have some really exciting courses at AlgoCamp, so do check out courses.algocamp.io slash learn to get few more details around that. So that's what uh, it about, so that was it about this particular video. I just wanted to share the update on how exactly the cohort is going on, right? So do let me know if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. I would be really happy to answer all of them. That being said, let's wrap this particular video here and we are going to meet soon in the next set of videos. Till then, take care. Bye-bye. I'm Sanket Singh. Signing off.